Let's take a look and crawl on the inside, don't you think so, Ringa? Track number one, Crawling King Snake. Kind of loving the, the slow, creeping start to this blues jam. Just kind of a nice, first of all, like studio, kind of yeah. get into it, and then everybody just kind of, all of a sudden Patrick comes in. Perfect beginning. Yeah, I think it's a really good way to kind of signal what this album is about. When you consider the fact that it was recorded in about 10 hours right after the tour, I kind of like this loosey-goosey start to the album with the band kind of tuning in and getting ready to go and then you hear like the are you ready and then you hear dan with like all the reverb in that in that microphone just saying yeah just kind of yeah. just kind of sets the intent of this album and gets you ready for what's to come yeah pretty much and this song is an old uh, johnny lee hooker uh, number that um i'm sure a lot of many other blue artists have uh have pretty much covered since this time but uh, this one I've heard in other versions, and it may have been the Johnny Lee Hooker version, but uh, definitely uh, definitely is a uh, blues jam from the past, it feels like. Yeah, it's a it, kind of a good choice, too, for the first song of this album. It just kind of crawls in. First thing I really noticed was actually just like how good it sounds, how well everything's mixed. We get right into that first verse, and you just have that chunky rhythm guitar on your left, yeah. and the crawling melody lead on the right. Really cool sound, really cool vibe. Yeah, and some uh, some of the blues kind of like carry over. I think is the way that there is this kind of exclamation um, after Dan sings, you know, "Crawling King Snake." There's just this. I feel like the band is like truly in a focal point where they're singing and performing around you and pointing towards you. Kind of has that perfect mm-hmm. feeling of the bass in the back. The drums are in front of you. You're flanked by the guitars on the left and right. You just feel like you're in a safe car. So you mentioned Johnny Lee Hooker. It's also credited to Big Joe Williams as well. And when I was looking up a version to compare this to the closest version that I actually found is one by junior Kimbrough. So yeah, yeah. not even who's credited as the original, the junior Kimbrough version seemed to be the one that is most resemblant to what we're hearing from the black keys here. It kind of has that same rough structure of the guitar melody down, 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 down that thing. The, mm-hmm. but the black keys version is, this is much more refined. I think the vocal mem- melodies are actually pretty similar, but obviously this one's just a little more polished and a little more structured, I would say. You know, and Junior so Kimbrough is actually one of their major influences. That uh, that it, it, there there is also a play in the uh, Chumaloma or Chulahoma album that they had released back in 2006. That it was all Junior Kimbrough, and so this is a nice little uh, kind of like nod back to him, kind of a, a redux of the uh, Chulahoma album. Yeah, we're going to hear Junior Kimbrough's name quite a bit throughout oh, yeah. the rest of this show today. Otherwise, there's a, kind of a solo fest here, and that's kind of how all these so- songs are. We get kind of a few different solos through this one. The first one yeah. kind of teases in at about 2.05. Nothing crazy, just a nice little slide guitar, just kind of set the mood, getting us started there. Oh yeah, you can get cooking into that solo just a little bit there. It's just, it's a nice elevation above the rest of the kind of, just kind of like cruising music right there. Just is able to elevate the music just a little bit. And then uh, Ringer, if you listen on, it's a 306 here, just right after the, uh, one of the verses here, verse three, I think, uh, is basically, this is like straight up, like, Straight up blues jamming. There is there's the intensity of both guitars and a slow, gradual growth playing throughout the space, and it's it's not really like super dy- you know dynamic, but it's just really dynamite. You know, it's, there's no unnecessary showmanship. I feel like here it's just like four or five guys just jamming along, mm-hmm. and this this area felt so fantastic. Yeah, the cool thing. So that guitar solo kind of kicks in shortly after that, around three nineteen. And what I really appreciated here on the mixing and production is 
If you go back to that first solo at 205, it's all in your left ear. So if you're listening on stereo headphones as a listener, the first guitar solo, basically you can only hear it in your left ear. And then if you listen to this next solo at 319, it's all in the right ear. So it almost in a way to me feels like it's mimicking two different guitar players here. And there very well might be the other guitar player on here could be Kenny Brown. We'll talk about him coming up, but it could potentially be that to kind of signify there's two different people playing these solos. You have one doing the slide guitar in the left ear and then later in the song in the right ear. I just thought that was a pretty nice, subtle touch. You might not notice it if you're not paying attention or listening for it, but it's kind of cool just to hear that that contrast there. Yeah, definitely. There's there's some uh, there's some good guitar work that's going on in both channels throughout this album, and this is a really good representation here. And then we get kind of a third solo here at 505, and this tone is just really rooted in the blues, but it's not as much of a straight blues tone or blues solo. It's got that Dan Auerbach vibe, which is kind of cool. It just pierces through with that little bit of crunch, that little extra bit of edge. So kind of cool way to start this album. I'm always a fan. If we get three different guitar solos in one song, I'm not going to be complaining. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, this is definitely one of our... One of our fortes to get a, quite a handful of guitar solos into one song, man. Yeah, and then I like how this one ends. It's very relatable as a musician. It kind of sounds like a jam sesh ending where there isn't really a defined end and someone just kind of starts to initiate it by slowing down or playing a little quieter. And then you can every, you can hear everyone else just kind of slowly fall in behind and you just kind of have this like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> as everything stops rather than a defined like we've been rehearsing this for months like boom we're all gonna end on the same note this is more of just that (laughs) pitter out that's resemblant of a jam session which is really cool yeah definitely it's like one of those things where i think it later on the song later on in the album he goes yeah we'll do a fade out with that and it's just like no just leave in the jam feel to it you know (laughs) so for me cool opening track it's slow it's not going to be for everyone but really, that's what this whole album is. It's not going to be for everyone, but I think we're just getting warmed up here. So I'm kind of a fan of where we've come so far in one track and where we might go from here. Yeah, final thoughts on this one is I thought this was a great kickoff to the blue style album that's going to be showing up here. You know, the mix helps give this song the crawling sense while the drawling, lazy vocals fill in the slithery aspect of the snake and uh, just excellent blue song, I think. <laughs> 